and welcome, my friends, to another episode of Yu-Gi-Oh! Master Duel ASMR. I am Alakazam ASMR, and I have been making a Yu-Gi-Oh! Master Duel ASMR Entertainment Series, where we go through various modes of Yu-Gi-Oh! Master Duel to explain how the Yu-Gi-Oh! trading card game works in its digital form in this game, Yu-Gi-Oh! Master Duel. In the previous episodes in this series, I haven't played for a little while. We've covered the tutorial, Dual Restart, Dual Training, and Tactical Tri-Deck. This time we're going to have a more focused solo gate to focus on. The topic of this video. We will be playing Yu-Gi-Oh! Master Duel, the Absolute Monarch, ASMR. These solo gates will now cover specific types and archetypes of Yu-Gi-Oh! cards. In this instance, the Monarchs. Gate details. Use Monarch spell and trap cards for successful tribute summons to activate powerful effects. The Monarch. The very embodiment of destruction. Obliterate all. Let's open up the gate. So, we have a few duels, some practice, but just to make things interesting, these aren't just going to be about me dueling all the time. Some of these solo gates actually include lore, little visual novel experiences to give you a taste of the backstory of these Yu-Gi-Oh cards. Because believe it or not, there are entire stories woven into the artwork of the cards themselves, and Master Duel has presented a way to view them in a different format. So sit back and relax as we begin Yu-Gi-Oh! Master Duel, the Absolute Monarch ASMR. Scenario 1. Let's have a look at the powerful force of destruction, the Monarchs. The Absolute Monarch. In this world, some beings embodied the concept of destruction. Their dignified appearance and behavior were like those of monarchs. No one knew for what purpose the monarchs sought the destruction of the world. They wield their paranormal powers and reduce everything in their sight to nothingness. Thunder booms before them and trees turn brittle. They boil the mountains and crack the earth. They conjure storms and submerge all into unfathomable darkness. The world steeped in turmoil and rage, subsumed by violence. And when there is nothing more to destroy, they move to the next land, searching for further destruction. All that witness this great destruction shudder in fear. It is the fate of any unfortunate enough to be in their path to disappear in an instant. And among the destroyers of this world, there is an Alpha. Its overwhelming power of intimidation lays others destroyers prone, and it possesses untold strength. Erebus, the underworld monarch, Erebus, the underworld monarch, sits on his throne in the darkest of darkness, looking on at the destruction of the world as if it were the most natural thing. And that's an introduction to the monarch archetype in Yu-Gi-Oh. It's time to wield this terrible and wicked power for ourselves in a practice duel where we will learn the ins and outs of the Monarch deck. So, if you want to wield dark, malevolent, sinister, 
wicked, terrifying power, then perhaps the monarchs offer what you seek. Let us begin at practice tool and find out, my friend. Let's go together into darkness. It's time to duel. What makes a Monarch deck unique? When you tribute summons are successfully executed, you will be able to use a range of powerful effects. Take on your opponent with level 5 and 6 monsters that you can bring out easily, or level 8 monsters that have even more formidable effects. You can also customize your deck in many ways to experiment with dueling with a range of strategies using Monarch spell and trap cards that aid with tribute summoning, or tributing monsters of different attributes and etc. The opponent sets three cards face down. Draw. Idea, the Heavenly Squire. Stand by. We've drawn Idea, the Heavenly Squire. Summon Idea, the Heavenly Squire, and activate its effect. Monarch cards, such as this, Mobius, the Mega Monarch, are powerful creatures that become even more powerful when a suitable tribute has been offered. We will summon Idea, the Heavenly Squire, to demonstrate. Idea, the Heavenly Squire, has an effect. If it's normal or special summoned, we can special summon one monster from our deck in defense position. We are going to summon Eidos, the Underworld Squire, Light and Darkness working together. You can perform an extra tribute summon this turn because of Eidos, the Underworld Squire's effect. Tribute summon the level 8 Mobius, the Mega Monarch. So, the trick is, Monarchs lock you out from using your extra deck, which is home to various powerful creatures. However, in exchange you get access to the Monarchs through tribute summoning. Only through their power alone can you unleash their true potential. Let us summon Mobius the Mega Monarch. I summon thee. Activate Mobius the Mega Monarch's effect. When this card is tribute summoned, we can target up to three spell or trap cards on the field. Destroy those targets. If this card was tribute summoned by using a water monster, we get an additional effect. But that doesn't matter right now. Because Mobius was not simply summoned, but tribute summoned, we can destroy up to three spell and trap cards. Exactly what we need to wipe the board. And now, with Mobius the Mega Monarch, we can attack directly. Seize victory, Mobius. It is done. Victory is ours. The opponent's life points have been reduced to zero. That is but a taste of what a Monarch deck has to offer. There are many Monarchs of different elemental types Mobius specializing in destroying spells and traps. But we're not done yet. Now we're going to do a practice duel. Special summon Spell Striker in the Tricky to secure tributes for tribute summons, while utilizing Dark World Dealings to replace your hand. Watch out for the card destroying Kuras, the Light Monarch. The game is going to give us a loner deck to have a taste of this power. Let's go into a practice duel with a Lona Monarch deck. Let's see what the opponent does. One card face down. We draw a trap card, the Prime Monarch. We activate Pot of Extravagance. In a Monarch deck, we do not need to use the extra deck, 
but we can still have cards in it, meaning we can banish six cards to draw two. Since we aren't using the extra deck, there's no drawback. We set a trap card face down. Next. Hmm. Eidos, the Underworld Squire. We have two Eidos, the Underworld Squires. Let's defend and see what the opponent does. Raigeki break. By discarding a card, they destroy our card. Activate the Prime Monarch, a continuous trap. How dare you attack us! Activate Pantheism of the Monarchs. We send a Monarch card from our hand to the graveyard to draw two cards. Hmm. Activate Tenacity of the Monarchs. We can reveal one card to show the opponent. We activate the Prime Monarch in our graveyard to summon a creature to our field. Now we can add these cards to our hand. Now witness this. Monarchs are built on tribute summoning. We have the powerful Aether, the Heavenly Monarch. Draw two cards. Plenty of spell and trap card support. We're going to activate the Monarch Storm Forth. Once during this turn, if we would tribute a monster for a tribute summon, we can tribute the opponent's monster, even though we don't control it. This means, with this creature summoned through a trap card, we have one tribute, and now we have two. We can simultaneously eliminate the opponent's monster by using it as a sacrifice. Come forth, Aether, the Heavenly Monarch. If this card is tribute summoned, we can send two Monarch spell or traps with different names or deck to the graveyard, and then special summon one monster with 2400 or more attack and 1000 defense from our deck, but return it to the hand during the end phase. Send two cards to the graveyard. Now we can summon various monarchs. Look at the variety of cards we have in display. Grand Marg, the Mega Monarch of Earth. Mobius, the Mega Monarch of Water, Ice. Thestalos, the Mega Monarch of Fire. Reza, the Mega Monarch of Wind. Zaborg, the Mega Monarch of Thunder. These powerful creatures all have various effects. Caius, the Mega Monarch of Darkness. Aether, the Heavenly Monarch of Light. But what we are going to summon is the Alpha, Erebus, the Underworld Monarch. Come forth, 
Erebus, the underworld monarch. The tide turns. Now. Erebus, attack. Aether, attack. We activate our trap card. To shuffle two cards into the deck and draw a card. Let's see what the opponent does. Erebus returns to her hand due to being summoned by Aether. We activate the Prime Monarch in the graveyard. By banishing a card, we can restore a creature to the field. Now we have two creatures on the field. The enemy attacks directly. That wasn't wise. Now we are going to Tribute Summon Erebus the Underworld Monarch. Aether. Fade. Erebus returns. Because he is Tribute Summoned, his true power awakens. I send one card to the graveyard. And another one. Shuffle one card from the opponent's hand or their side of the field into the deck. We eliminate the opponent's card in their hand. So if it was a trap or a spell, it's useless. It's back in the deck. Prime Monarch attacks. Insolent. Erebus. Crush Spell Striker. Let's see what the opponent does. A single card to defend themselves with. The opponent has no more moves left. It's time to finish this. Erebus, the Underworld Monarch plunge their field into darkness and seize victory. Victory is ours. The opponent's life points are reduced to zero. So, these solo gates are a good way to experience different archetypes of cards without purchasing them or obtaining them. You have a straight path with a little bit of lore, practice, a duel, and a goal. While this was a very brief episode, this is only the first solo gate, but I feel like I gave you a taste of what the monarchs have in offer. These optional duels, while in these solo gates, tend to focus on cards not traditionally in these types of decks. Stuff that synergizes, sure, but still... A fun way to experience different types of cards. I hope you enjoyed Yu-Gi-Oh! Master Duel, The Absolute Monarch. A brief episode to be sure, but perhaps it gives you an idea if the monarchs are your delicious, malevolent cup of tea. Please join us next time in Yu-Gi-Oh! Master Duel ASMR, where we approach a bigger solo gate. The Warriors of the Six Elemental Lords. As you can see from the appearance here, there's a lot more to experience. A simple gate with lore, and I hope you'll join me when that video arrives. Until then, this is your friend, Alakazam ASMR. Happy dueling, everyone. And remember, may the heart of the cards always be with you.
Take care, everyone. I love you all, and I believe in you. See you soon, and adios, my friends. Thank you.